Good morning, folks. We've got a space weather update, including on the CME we identified in yesterday's show. We also have two stories that are going to feel quite nostalgic for veteran observers who have been here for a while. Let's start with our star. Solar flaring remains in the C-class range. Small filament destabilizations continue to occur. Solar wind is slightly variable at Earth, but geomagnetic conditions are holding. If you recall, yesterday we showed some filament eruptions in the SOHO coronagraphs indicating possible CME launch towards Earth. Both Enlil spirals are now updated and do show a faint and somewhat unusual looking CME signature heading our way. They do not predict impact until middle of the week, and NOAA's distinctly shows a density dropout, almost like an anti-CME shockwave in the solar wind is coming. We'll keep an eye open for that Tuesday to Thursday. Meanwhile, as we mentioned, there are several more plasma filaments, quite a bit of eruption potential, and some did in fact erupt yesterday. Those were not aimed at Earth. The sunspots are actually presenting less of a threat this morning due to their spread and slight decay. We still have umbral cores at the active regions, but their interaction potential is dropping as they spread and lose that densely compacted heliolocation. Folks, we recall a couple days ago the cyclone that broke a wind speed record at one of the islands offshore Australia. Pretty powerful storm. Well, earlier this morning, an earthquake struck the track of the storm, well above average in this unusual location, and veteran observers will recall several such oddly located quakes in the wake of big storms, like in 2011 when the Virginia earthquake that damaged monuments in Washington, D.C., struck a line where an unusual hurricane had tracked through as well. Lastly here today, it's been a while since we hit cosmology, but it was one of our key coverage topics of the last decade. The coverage was based on a single principle that the dark matter models needed a change in a major way. Today, we get the third time James Webb has delivered information in that same vein. Once again, galaxies seen in the furthest regions of our space observation are way too big to fit the model. There is no way to produce galaxies such as these behemoths at such a supposedly early time of the cosmos. That is, unless it wasn't such an early time in the cosmos, or entirely different dynamics are responsible for galactic growth, or both. This is the primary reason we were excited for James Webb, and so far it has not disappointed. We saw this concept introduced with Hubble and other programs in the past, but James Webb continues to confirm. The prevailing paradigm of cosmological physics needs to change, thanks to the glaring inconsistency provided by these massive early galaxies. We greatly appreciate your support. Please check out the links below the video in the description box. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.